Varsity Club, welcome back to another classic. And today we have some more college football revamps against the number 16 team in the nation and newest member of the Big Ten. Now, if you remember in the offseason, USC and LSU both came over to the Big Ten. It was a massive move that has really shifted the power of college football. And USC has a roster that is primed to try and play for a national title, but they did lose a really bad game against Michigan State last week. More on that later. Johnny Turner, though, is their number one quarterback. They have a really good right guard and center, a great middle linebacker, really good receivers in Corey Wood and Justin McPherson. Good outside linebacker here again in Andrew Brown. You can see they're really built, but they have one big weakness. That weakness, in my opinion, is their running back. They have Jacob Stewart, who's a power running back. They then have Kevin Pace, who's another power running back. And their third running back is Sheldon Brown, who is also a power running back. They don't really have a speed running back until Evan Wilson, who looks to be redshirted this year, as well as Jordan Henley, who's a 6'4", 218-pound power back. USC apparently loves them some power backs, but you got to imagine if they had some more speed, they'd be a little bit more deadly. And speaking of being deadly, the baddest man on the planet, Jason Barr, is still the number one vote getter for the Heisman list right now. Uh, he had 126 yards and two touchdowns against UVA last week and Seth Sanders, former Cascade Valley Coyote, ends up coming out here with 220 plus yards, 34 yards on the ground and three total touchdowns. They don't really penalize him too much because, again, he was battling the number one team in the nation. But you'll notice Johnny Turner is right there at the number three spot. This is a big game for him to show his stuff because they lost to Ohio State, not Michigan State last week. But losing to Ohio State was not exactly great because they weren't ranked at the time. And to give you a quick look at the polls, you can see Cascade Valley sitting number one. We've got the team up north and number two who hasn't played a game yet this year. We'll see what happens this week. Uh, Georgia, Notre Dame, and UNC round on your top five. We keep moving down. We're going to see that USC again uh, goes from 10 to 16. LSU also falls from 6 to 15. They lost to Michigan State. Then USC loses to Ohio State, who wasn't ranked at the time. And you see Virginia still holds strong at 17 despite losing to us in their first game of the year. Oklahoma, Purdue, Auburn, Florida, those teams are rounding out your top 25. And the last little bit of big news for this week is going to be Kendall Johnson, a 78 overall corner size with us. He's a four star. You love to see us getting a four star right off the rip. 95 speed, 90 acceleration. He's got really good man coverage and zone coverage at 82 and 84. His press is an 85. His pursuit and his play rec are both also high. This dude should be another one of the dominant corners that we've built a really a good legacy off of these past few seasons. And also one last thing before we jump into the game, a big shout out to Dire Wolf GE who suggested we run the anthracite helmet, the orange jersey, the anthracite pants, and I threw on the orange shoes just because I thought it little match a little bit better. But if you got a uniform combination you want to see me rock in an upcoming episode, leave me a comment down below. I want to hear what you think. The gauntlet of games that we've had so far this season, I think they've honestly taken their toll in this squad. We have guys that are just out here trying their best to make sure that this team keeps the national championship hopes alive. And when you're battling top 20 team after top 20 team, and then you got to go and do it at home or on the road, it's going to be really tough for your team. But you know what? We're happy to be home. We're happy to keep things moving. We're trying to go out here and pick up a W today as Jeremy Willis, the big fella, picks up looks to be seven. Cedric Thornton's done a really good job this season. Again, some small issues here and there, but overall his mechanics look so much better this year. And honestly, he's almost there the first down, but he doesn't get it. And I don't think we can risk it this early, but it's been really fun to watch Thornton ultimately blossom this season. He had an opportunity multiple times last year. He then comes out of the national title on the last drive and plays incredibly well to help us win that when Cedric Riley had turnover problems. He's had a weird career, but it's been fun. Speaking of a weird career, I mean, Stephen Lowe, what he's been able to do has been unreal. This dude has been a massive piece of our defense each season. And look at us go down and get Johnny Turner. Mark Mullins comes out here and gets his another sack in this season. I don't even have track of how many he's got this year. But I know career leader wise, that man has that record and he will continue to have it. I don't think it will ever get broken as good as he's been. What a dot here. We can't keep up with Coleman and Stewart picks up 16. We talked a little bit before the game that one of the biggest issues USC has, I think, is the fact that they don't have speed in running back. But I'm going to be honest, Jacob Stewart looks like he's just not fine right now. I mean, the man nearly got 11 yards. USC is also trying to build their offense in more of a pro style. So you're going to see their guys do what they can. But Johnny Turner is going to be a problem for us. First down again. Turn over shotgun with Stewart to his left hand side. Low patrol in the middle. They pick up. I mean, the blocking from USC's line is insane. Chris Bass is going to pull him down with us 26 yards later. The Stewart's in the red zone. Stewart's shown really good vision so far today. He's been a big part of this offense like we didn't expect him to be, and we are paying for all the slander we gave that man earlier. But what a hit by Hempel to force that ball loose. Now, just as Stewart was doing incredibly well, we found out he actually got a strained back muscle. He's going to be out for a couple of plays, possibly up to two quarters. We'll see how he ultimately blossoms, but that is going to be massive for USC. And honestly, it's even better for us. They have a third and 10. They don't have their prized possession at running back. They throw it, not though, and it goes to Dan Black, who gets 12 yards and all like that. He's in the end zone. So USC puts together a really good drive, even though their running back comes out for, again, what looks to be the foreseeable future. The heck are you throwing that, Thornton? 
But again, even though USC lost their running back, Johnny Turner is still incredible. He's a Heisman candidate in his own right, so he can, you know, be capable enough to lead this team and then some for really good drives. And right now, we are struggling. Big third down for the squad. What can we ultimately put together right here? Can we get something that's going to lead to our team getting a first down? Thornton in the backfield. Thornton throws one, and that is the most threaded needle I've ever seen in my entire life. Thornton throws a pass that I was almost positive was going to be intercepted, but somehow that ball ends up being completed, and we got a first down because of it. I don't know if that was skill or luck, but either way, I'm taking it. He's got a guy deep. He floats over top of the defense, and it's nearly picked by John Campbell. As much as we would have loved for Thornton to set his feet, maybe throw that one. If he sets his feet, he's definitely getting hit. He didn't really have an opportunity to do much other than throw it on the run. And it's a tough one to get your hips turned around for that. The pressure is in Thornton's face again. He's taking his time. Probably could have went up the field a little bit more and got the first, but he decides to pick up six as he looks back down. Barton Thornton in the backfield. Hempills line up at a slot receiver. He's more of a decoy right now. They completely bite on this little halfback screen. And look at Barr out here in the open field. The spin move has been deadly. He's got a barrage of people. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your Heisman winner from last season. And he's about to win another one. You love to see a, just a committee of blockers down the field with Jason Barr. That's one of the best halfback screens you've probably run in his tenure here at Cascade Valley. Those dudes were ready and they made plays so that his dude could get all the way down the field and score. It's an incredible way to come back and answer too because USC was feeling pretty good even though they lost their starting running back. They knew they had an opportunity here and look at Johnny trying to go again and we sack him again. I believe the second one of the game this time. Corey Brown, number 71, has really emerged as a great piece in the middle of this defense. That defensive line for Cascade Valley the last three-ish seasons, I'd argue, has just been phenomenal. But look at Bernard Harvey getting involved. Harvey with the pick, and now we've got the ball back. Uh-oh. USC's in trouble. Great play by Harvey, and again, hats off to Corey Brown, who really his getting pressure in the backfield is what partially kept that play from turning into a good one for USC. Second to five coming up, Thornton, the only guy in the backfield. Yes, this guy, RJ Riley, who might have a concussion, but at least he held on to the rock. First down, Thornton. He's going to put Willis on a streak route here. Across the middle, he's got Tom CTE Baker, and Tom Baker is going to be all the way down to the four. Jason Barr looks stupendous in the last drive, getting it obviously into the end zone. When he got in an open field and had some blocking, you saw what happened. And this time, he goes for about two yards, almost in the end zone. From the two, Barr looking to get in. He's going to cut up, and he may not be the only one with CTE. We're two for three on third down conversions, and we are literally on the half yard line. This has got to be a touchdown. We're going right up the middle with Barr again. Barr completely untouched this time, thank God, because if he got hit again, the man might be out for the season with a concussion. Taking a nice little lead. A lot of pressure now sits on USC's shoulders. What can they ultimately do with their starting running back out of the game? Can Johnny turn to live up to the Heisman hype and get his team back in this game? That was a quick pass to their number one receiver who gets him about nine yards. Low trying to blitz a little bit. Turner's got some room up the middle. He's going to get hit by Tim Wade. He shrugs that off, and Matthew Fowler brings him down after nine. Start of the second quarter, USC again trying to drive. They're getting closer to the 50. Great blocking by this offensive line, and even their backup halfback is shredding us. All these broken tackles. Are you kidding me? Pace goes for 17. Again, none of the running backs that don't see playing time today for USC are fast at all by any stretch, but these dudes are powerful, and they will always break tackles, especially when we're trying to get them. And we're going to see Fowler bring down, again, the quarterback. But that dude was almost going to the house. Turner continuing to do his best here. One thing he's not doing, though, is testing us deep. And I think part of that is because we have the best defensive backs in the nation. And it's making it tough. But Steven Lowe forces the fumble. Pace is going to pick it up. Fowler makes him fumble. And Pace still gets it. And I don't even know how he got positive yards there. The rain is definitely proving to be difficult right now for USC. And, man, our defense is out there flying at him. Lowe forces the fumble. Pace picks it up. We force another fumble, and USC still picks it up. It's Fowler and Wade can't get Turner, and then we still can't get him with Dwayne Cole. Johnny Turner really has been great today. We're going to keep Steven Lowe here in a little bit of a QB spy because, again, Turner is gassed, but, again, we still got to imagine he wants to run a little bit. Great change of pace there by Kevin Pace, no pun intended, and he picks up three. These receivers have struggled to get separation, and because of that, we're doing a lot of pressure. Oh, my God, we have no one guarding this guy across the middle. Luckily, he's sitting down for a quick route. We got guys on him, though, and Turner goes down with Stephen Lowe getting the sack. Stephen Lowe having a fantastic first half. Four tackles, two of those being a sack today. Josh Cole may be gone, but Stephen Lowe is playing just like him at the moment. They go with the halfback screen. We go for a little bit of something here. Mullis can't bring down pace. Our guys are struggling, and Dwayne Cole gets to make it a fourth and two. What is USC going to do? Knowing they have a little bit of momentum and they want to make sure they get points to the board, they are going for it on fourth and two. We're bringing a blitz. Turner is gassed. This man's been running for his life the entire game. We have someone there. Hemphill is going to be on the other guy. We see the blown coverage. 
uh, by the other corner whose name we didn't see, and Davis picks up eight. I believe that was Demel Hill on the coverage. Again, coverage is not exactly his strong suit, especially in man. He's more of a zone coverage kind of guy, but we saw that end up failing. Tim Wade brings down Tyler Davis after a couple when he gets down to the five. USC means business right now. They would love to be using their running back in here. Bringing Demel Hill over to help the coverage out. Again, man coverage is not exactly something we want him doing a ton of, but Turner goes across the middle and they abuse what they saw with Demel Hill again. Marcus Levine, the tight end, is in the end zone and USC is about to tie it up. Tie ball game here in the second quarter. Again, plenty of time left to see how this game shakes out, but we know USC is going to be putting the pressure on us and they are in the backfield on Cedric Thornton like it's nobody's business. Second down here, the safety's coming up in the box. We probably should have audible a guy to block on that one, but again, it's just bad pass protection. Third and incredibly long. The last time we went for a halfback screen, it ended up going to the house. Can we do that again? Can lightning strike twice? They do have a defensive lineman trying to guard Barr. Barr slipping through a little bit, does break a tackle, and he gets 11, but we needed 16, and we got to be punting now. We got a pretty solid punt, and we end up seeing them deep in their own territory inside about the 25 or so. It's a long drive, but again, they got plenty of time to try to make something happen. And Johnny Turner is trying to will it into existence, and we bring him down yet again. The number one thing we told our defense this week is, look, above all else, make sure, make sure you do not let Johnny Turner kill us. On the ground. In the air, we know that he's obviously a stud and can do a lot of things. But on the ground, we're trying to put some pressure on him, and Bobby Edwards picks up the fumble. I think he might have been down here. This one's likely going to be overturned. We'll get one more look at it. We don't really get a good angle. I don't think he was actually up. I think he was down, but we'll see. They're talking about challenging it already. And as you sort of assume here, they're going to be going, doing a replay. The coach challenge obviously comes out. We look at it one more time. Yeah, I mean, he definitely hit the ball off one of our guys, but I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, his knees down. Okay, his knees down. That one's getting overturned. USC will get the ball back, and it is what it is. Obviously, the Cascade Valley fans don't love that call, but that's really the right call. Objectively, it was the right call. The refs have to make sure they call the game as it actually is. Steven Logan gets the pressure. He goes across. Wood's going to pick up one, but Hemp Hill's quickly there to stop him. It really does feel like Johnny Turner's been running for his life this entire game. We are putting pressure after pressure after pressure on him, but this dude is still throwing some dicey passes and nearly getting his team in a bad spot with that throw. Corey Wood and Justin McPherson are, again, the number one and number two receivers. Uh, respectively on USC's roster, but that was just McPherson's first catch of the game, and I don't really think Wood has caught more than one, possibly as well. Little wide receiver screen is speak of the devil. McPherson picks up eight. We've definitely seen a lot of this little short action plays. They haven't really tried us deep very much. The short stuff is working, though, so I don't honestly blame them. Like, why go deep if you're getting the short yardage here and there? USC's trying their best to retake the lead here. Bringing a little bit of a blitz. Don't get a lot of pressure. Corey Brown, though, coming from the defensive tackle spot in the coverage. Does get the tackle after 12. Two minutes left here in the first half. USC's doing a really good job of milking the clock, but Steven Lowe brings the heat and makes Johnny Turner nearly fumble. USC's offensive line is just struggling to do anything with this pressure. We've brought different blitzes, different looks, and they just aren't experienced enough to really stop it. We're going on the left side, if you've noticed. The right side is where we know they're good, so the left side is where we've been trying to exploit, and we get Johnny Turner again for a sec. Dropping our guys back in coverage a little bit. It looks like... That was Chris Bass getting the sack in the last play. We'll wait for the official judgment. They go with the screen, and we got guys prepared. Turner goes down. I don't know if Mullins got that or if they ended up giving it to somebody else. Looks like Tony Rutledge gets credited with the sack, but both of those guys were in the backfield immediately, and they had nothing to do with that one. USC has a really good punt. We've got the ball right around the 20-yard line, and it's our time to try to see if we can put more points on the board before the half ends up hitting. Thornton. All day to throw, gets that one to CTE Baker, and he picks up 10. 134 pass yards. It's been kind of a miserable game to pass the ball deep, I think, if we're being objective here. The rain has made a lot of things complicated for these young quarterbacks, but they're trying their best to get this ball out there. Second down, 10 yards to go. The pressure's there, but there's just no time to throw it. USC's doing a really good job of disguising sort of their blitz packages and just bringing so many people that we just can't possibly have enough to block them. Now they switch things up. They got a lot of guys in coverage. This one's thrown in. It's going to be intercepted by Bennett. They're going to have the ball in prime field position. Willis brings him down. And USC's almost in field goal range. Now USC's feeling the momentum. They've got this ball with just a couple of more yards. They'll be in field goal range. They're trying to get their guys involved. Edwards is going to try to bring him down. He can't. Mullins is going to bring him down, but he gets nine yards. And there's 46 seconds left. We're going to bring the blitz again. Trying to exploit that left side of the line. Overmatch him a little bit. Harvey's going to try to get in there. He can't, but DeMel Hill does clean up the receiver, and Black picks up five. USC has used all their timeouts except for one. They only have a single timeout remaining with 41 seconds left for playing the pass here. Turner's going to make an adjustment. He blitz. They go with a quick screen, and that one's broken up by Hemphill. Not a lot of time left on the clock. USC knows they definitely want to get points, but not give us a chance to have the ball back because we obviously messed up, and we could have had a major drive going, and 
We just sort of ruined it. USC switching the hurry up. Third and 11. Turner is just running nonstop, and Mullins brings him down after three to make it fourth and eight. They're going to line up for a field goal, but you know what? We're feeling ice in the kicker. Why not? No, unfortunately, they have a really good head coach, so they activate an anti-freeze, which means that, well, you can't really ice the kicker at this point. So they're going to line up for the field goal. This one's up. This one is perfectly down the middle, and USC takes the lead with 15 seconds left going into halftime. We've got a kick return going. Wait a second. Mike Hemphill. Mike Hemphill. Mike Hemphill to close out the half. You're kidding me. Hemphill is going to be an absolute stud. Waste the clock down to one second. He goes 99 yards. Mike Hemphill is that dude. USC had been smart, they would have squib kicked that one and been gone with it, but they didn't. They kick it to Mike Hemphill, the most dangerous man in college football. Even though he's been a little bit less himself, I think, on the defensive side, this dude is still an absolute weapon. 99 yards later, this man's in the end zone. You'd love to see it. Our first kick return touchdown of the season, and honestly, it's been a long time since we've had one. Probably since the last time Hemphill returned one. Bobby Edwards, oh, just flipped the man. Are you kidding me? And that's Stewart, who's actually back in the game now, which is good news for USC and bad news for us. And even though Johnny Turner does have two passing touchdowns today, he still was not thrown for 100 yards through the air. That's kind of mind-boggling when you consider what he's had today. And Demel Hill just got juked out of his shoes by a guy with 89 speed. This is what I'm worried about a little bit, because obviously Pace was pretty good. He had some moments out there for USC, but Stewart is obviously going to be a better running back for USC right now with the style of game that they play. We're watching Stewart at the backfield. Turner is trying to find something, and Corey Brown's going to get him down again. Second and 13 is shotgun. If there is one thing USC could do, it's just protect their quarterback a whole lot better, because right now they're not doing a good job of it, and Pace stays in bounds to pick up 11 when they needed 13. It's third and short. We're going to do our best to put pressure as much as we can, because this offensive line has been caving. The right side has taking on way too much. They're trying to deal with double and triple teams, but it's just not painting out for them. They end up handing this one off to Stewart. Stewart goes up, and Demel Hill, who's had some issues tackling today, makes a major stop, and the upperclassmen are ready for that. USC ends up punting that football. We've got the ball obviously deep in our own territory again, and we're ready to see what we can do here. And speaking of what we can do, we're trying to see what Jason Barr can do. Jason Barr was criminally underused in the first half. He had under 10 yards rushing. That is just something you cannot have from your Heisman candidate. And honestly, it's more on us than him because we just didn't give him opportunities to succeed. Sean Stewart in a QB this time. He's going to hand it off to Jason Barr, and Barr goes nowhere because that defensive tackle was ready for him. Second and long, going right back to Barr here. We want him to find some gaps, and look, he's starting to bridge things up a little bit. He just needs a little bit better blocking. Third and seven, can't necessarily afford to go ahead and run this one here, so we're going to switch things up slightly. Thornton, ready. Thornton's trying to find something. He dumps one off to Barr, and Barr might have got clothes on. He loses three on that, and USC again is just playing great defense this half. We have got to find ways to stop just letting all this pressure get to Thornton. We've also got to find ways to stop this run game. We're doing our best, and Coleman comes up with a big hit at the line of scrimmage. Pass off to Steven Lowe on that one, because if he doesn't make that hit in the backfield, I don't know if that tight end ends up getting hit where he ultimately does, which is, again, for no gain. They throw one, and it's just an unreal grab from Justin McPherson on Hemphill. Hemphill got a little bit lost in that double move, and McPherson picks up 34. That might be one of the best catches we've seen all college football season. Reaching behind him one-handed in the rain, it was a thing of beauty. Across the middle is Levine, who's been obviously a problem today, and Hill comes up for the big tackle. Six tackles in the afternoon for Demel Hill. Second and short here again. Turner with Stewart in the backfield, but look at Tony Rutless get around the edge. What a stop by the big fella. Third and five. USC knows they need to keep this drive moving. Even a field goal is fine here, but they cannot avoid to have to punt yet again. Turner throws one, and look at that. It's Corey Wood, the number one receiver for USC, finally gets one on Fowler. As much as you hate to see some of our top corners give up, you know, big catches here and there, it's just one of those things where if a quarterback and receivers have six hours to throw the football, bad things are going to happen for your secondary every single time. And speaking of bad things, are you kidding me? That was almost a Heisman moment for Johnny Turner. What a run. That was a touchdown-saving tackle by Mike Hampel. He comes completely over to the other side of the field and gets a hit that... Again, could possibly change this game unless we see USC get in the end zone here and Jacob Stewart trips over one of our guys, gets in, and they're going to have the lead now by three, assuming the extra point goes in. USC has now gained us 305 yards to our 162, and we're only down three. That just speaks volumes to how wild this game's ultimately been. Bring a Willis underneath. We're actually going to send Riley, I think, deep here. Just kind of play this one by ear. There we go. Hey, you know what? We'll take a yard or two. 
Thornton ready to hand this one off to Jason Barr. Nice run by Barr. Way to show some attitude, Jason Barr. At one point in today's game, I think we were three for four, three for five on third downs. Now we're three for seven. It's been a couple of drives in a row where we haven't been able to really produce anything major. And all of a sudden, we're starting to see Jason Barr get loose. One of the few things that's keeping USC in this game is the lack of production from Jason Barr in the ground. We're letting him get an actual breather here. Stewart comes in. Stewart looking for some run opportunities, and he goes to the middle for six. We're entering the fourth quarter down a couple of points. It's not often you see the number one team in the nation when it's Cascade Valley down going into the fourth. Need something big here. And by big, I didn't mean getting sacked. We had a guy open across the middle, but again, Thornton just doesn't have a lot of time. This is a huge third down and 12. Can we convert and make something possible happen here? Thornton trying to extend the play. Thornton's going to use his legs, and thank God he's fast because, good Lord, this man's going to pick up a major gain to keep us alive. That play in particular is huge because we end up clearing the right side of the field, meaning if the defenders don't sit in zone and they're all in man chasing our guys, we've got a really good opportunity to beat them deep. Bars approaching 50 yards in the game, which, again, feels crazy that we're entering the fourth with that. Thornton trying to get away, and he fumbles. This was going to be picked up by Simpson, thank God, and we end up recovering that one, but it's a huge loss. This defensive line for USC is just an absolute problem. We've had a major problem the entire afternoon against them. Thornton again, pretty gassed here. Sees a guy with a possible step. He throws it up to Tom Baker. That was picked off by Williams in a 50-50 ball. Williams has had some room. He's going to keep moving as Matt Wilson brings him down. The second interception in the game for Thornton and USC, he got the momentum. If USC tries to milk the clock, I think we're going to end up stopping them, but they've got to be aggressive here. You cannot let us get back in this game, and they got a huge misdirection there as the Mel Hill looks a little confused, and he picks up 18 with Stewart again, who's been healthy this half. He's been the difference maker. And it really feels like that's what Johnny Turner was missing in the first half, the threat of the run game from the ground. He had to do a whole lot. He was gassed a lot in that first half when Stewart went out because he was a one-man show. And now it's not up to just him. He has a backup running back in pace who can, again, come in and free things up a little bit. Turner's had a great game so far, over 200 yards passing. He's been dominating on the run game, too. We've hit him an unreal amount, but it hasn't necessarily mattered as Stewart goes up and gets that one. We're trying to cover two people at once, but they picked the right one. They're finding their groove, and we've got to stop him here. Fourth quarter, almost halfway over. Corey Wood across the middle. Bernard Harvey hits him, but it's another first down. First downs keep on coming. Our defense is looking a little gassed at the moment. Need a big-time player to step up and make a big-time play. Turner again is taking the clock down a little bit lower than you probably would think this late in the game, but they know they got the power running back as Demel Hill gets another tackle, but Stewart is literally finding his groove. Kevin Pace comes in for a little bit of a change of pace. Watching him out of the backfield. He's moving. Turner, though, always dangerous. Gets hit by Bobby Edwards for another sack. Bobby Edwards has been super active today. That's only his first tackle and first sack of the game, but good Lord has he been everywhere. Watching the running back. Turner's going to move. We got guys there, and we end up seeing Dwayne Cole with a hard hit, but again, now they're inside the 10. The unfortunate part is that we took our QB spy away to watch the running back because we know they can go to the running back pretty quickly. But because of that, it let Turner go where he needed to go. Jones trying to bring him down. Look at David Jones. Make it a huge stop, make it a fourth and short. What will USC do here? They are going to go for the field goal, which will give them a six-point lead, meaning if we score a touchdown and get the extra point, we have the lead. Interesting decision. We're going to see how that one pays off for him with a studio update here. We're going to see that Wisconsin beats Wyoming in a game that literally no one cares about. Six point game, three and a half minutes left. Let's see what our team's ultimately made of. You want to be the number one team? You want to compete for the back to back to back national championships? You have got to win games like this one. When your team is down, you've got to fight back. Jason Barr again, not a, not a typical game from him. Under 50 plus yards. He's going to find some room here, and Barr is going to go up again for 10 more. USC is predicating themselves on stopping the passing game, but we know we have three minutes left. First downs obviously stop the clock until the ball is reset. We're going to be just fine running the football if they're giving up yards like this. Not to mention, we also have two really good running backs, so we don't necessarily need to just have Jason Barr doing all the work. Thornton again feeling an unbelievable amount of pressure, looking for a block here. He's going to skirt it, and he goes out of bounds. He makes it third and short now. It's a massive play as Barr comes back in. The linebacker's going to push up a little bit. Thornton's going to keep one. Thornton is looking to keep it moving, and he does with five big yards. Cedric Thornton's been pretty pedestrian on the ground today, only averaging 2.7 yards per carry, a total of 27 on the game. We're used to seeing more when he decides to run. Maybe the rain is slowing him down a little bit. Thornton now gets down again. They immediately tackle Willis, and we had nowhere to pitch that one. The good news is that Thornton did not pitch that one, considering where his guy ultimately was. If he pitched it, that was almost going to be a turnover, you have to imagine. 
Oh no, this is bad. No, this is not good. Riley is not where we want him to be. He doesn't come back to the ball, but you know who does? The USC defender. Thornton actually got hit on that throw, which kind of lended to, you know, a little bit of the madness. He's got uh, elbow bursitis. Is eligible to come back soon, but it might be all she wrote. We'll be blitzing a lot here, hoping we can get a stop. We got guys in the backfield, but Johnny Turner doesn't care, and Johnny Turner is going to almost go into the end zone. We're calling a timeout, but it's not looking good. At this point, we kind of want them to score. Uh, if they score, we've got an opportunity to come out, get a touchdown, maybe get an onside kick. But Johnny Turner, despite what Demel Hill just did there, Johnny Turner has been a problem. USC knows they're incredibly close to taking down the number one team in the nation. The first time we've lost, and I believe 31 or 32 games, is potentially on the horizon. Stewart goes down, they're making a third and goal. They're gonna line up for a field goal. We essentially have to block it. I take that back. I'm an idiot. They are at third and goal, which I just said, which means they're not kicking a field goal. They're obviously going for it on third down. We don't have anyone covering the slot guy. We're going to watch 84 here. We don't know what Turner's going to do. We're playing the pass, though. We're going to waste the play clock down as long as they possibly can. An incomplete pass here would be massive. A sack would probably be not great for us. Play clock under 40. Johnny Turner may have just done it all. He's been putting this team on his back, and we have looked terrible because of it. To make matters worse, USC is going to be going for two here because they want to make sure they make this a two-score game. Stewart goes up the middle. We got Coleman there ready for him, but the only studio update that matters is the fact that we are in a massive, massive, terrible position. Our offense has been pretty bad today. Uh, we did get a little bit of help here from Mike Hemphill earlier, who returned a kick for a touchdown. Can Lightning strike twice for Hampill, who gets a really good block here, and Hampill's going to be down to 35 after getting a 31-yard game. It's only a 12-point game, a quick touchdown, an extra point, I mean, excuse me, an onside kick. We're right back in it. Thornton is going to unleash one, and that's going to be another interception. It's been a rough day for Cedric Thornton. It's going to be a rough week for him as he tries to recover from an absolute beatdown that led his team from being the number one team in the nation for the... Very first time not being in that spot in a really long time. USC has done the unthinkable. The number one team in the nation officially goes down. Thornton did not have a great game. You know who did? Johnny Turner. A guy who may have just catapulted himself to the number one position in the Heisman voting because Jason Barr maybe didn't get the ball enough. Was good when he had it, but just didn't have enough production today, unfortunately. Recapping the stats today, Thornton goes 9 for 17, 134 yards, a touchdown, three interceptions, got sacked three times, ran for his life a lot, just didn't have the best decision making out there. Maybe you blame it on the rain or the inexperience or whatever. This just can't be the case for our quarterback. On the ground, we see Barr 14 of 62, one touchdown. 14 attempts is okay. Honestly, we wish we got him more, but at the end of the day, it's just hindsight knows that we should have gotten him the ball a whole lot more. On the, excuse me, in the air, we see Bargo 3 for 74, including that incredible 66-yard touchdown. And really, there was nothing else to celebrate in the passing game. As we go to the defensive side of the ball, we're going to see Demel Hill, who did not look the greatest in some of the open field tackles. He still finished with 8 today, leading us. Stephen Lowe had a fantastic game, 7 tackles, 3 for loss, 2 sacks, as well as Fowler, who gets 7. Uh, from a sack perspective, we see 2 from Corey Brown, the redshirt freshman. We see 2 from Stephen Lowe. And then we get 1 from Bobby Edwards, Tony Rutledge, Chris Bass, Mark Mullins, and Jay Coleman. Interceptions we had one today from Bernard Harvey. Then obviously we want to go ahead and shout out uh, from a kick return standpoint, Mike Hemphill. Five returns, 180 yards, one touchdown, including a long of 98. There were some positives in this game, but offensively, we were stagnant. We have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what we did wrong. Because honestly, there's a whole lot of it, and this can't happen again. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>